What's we do? Capital G here letting you guys know what the heck happened at the 2017 North American World Championship Qualifier. And I'm going to let you guys know straight up in advance, this video will not quite be as thorough, Blade, <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Humor, as some of my other what the heck happened videos. And that's simply because Konami has not actually published the top 64 or top 32 deck breakdown. So it's kind of hard for me to actually say what had the most representation, although you guys can pretty much take a guess as to what deck pretty much dominated the event and as crazy as it is i don't even think that it's all that relevant because i don't think that that's the big takeaway and the big talking point of this event although it will definitely be one the big story of this event and my personal opinion was the fucking staggering attendance guys we had almost 2400 registered players in this event and that is mind-blowing to me 2379 players ended up registering for the event and uh, uh, yeah, that's pretty damn impressive. If you guys don't know, that is now officially the largest NAWCQ in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. And that's crazy because last year we broke the record as well. So in back-to-back -back years, we have broken the attendance record. And what's so amazing about it this year is, let's be real, we are in a tier zero format where if you're not running Zodiacs in some capacity of your deck, it just seems like you didn't have like a very good shot of winning this event. I know, rest in pepperonis to my prediction for paleozoics winning the event as a you know kind of a dark horse but I'm actually surprised that Yu-Gi-Oh! players just showed up in, in droves to come out and play at this event when it was pretty clear that Zodiacs gave you the best chance. And if you're not a fan of the deck, man, I think maybe you just came out, you just wanted to have some fun. And maybe some people, you know how people were saying that this was the last hurrah for pendulums? I think that people knew that this could be and probably would be the last hurrah for Zodiac as well. Obviously, it's not going to see a lot of play at Worlds because, you know, no Barrage, no Trident. None of the really good cards are going to be played, and uh, it, won't be, it won't be a deck that's represented there. But let's actually talk about what happened at the event. So, ultimately, Zodiac were represented in the finals. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. Uh, let's see if I can click it. There we go. Here, here was who won, uh, Chester Hawk Henson. He actually ended up playing 18 rounds of Swiss. That is, dude, just playing through that. I mean, that's basically playing two regionals back-to-back. -back. I consider a nine-round regional a pretty low long event and this is essentially double that especially considering that you're playing single elimination throughout the entire top cut that's pretty damn impressive just being able to survive 18 rounds of swiss and uh two days just playing that much Yu-Gi-Oh! to be honest but congratulations to him I watched uh, the entire top eight. He was an incredibly good duelist, and he was playing a true Draco version of Zodiac. And one of the reasons that I think true Draco did so much better here than at Euros is I think that not honestly all that much cha uh, changed from Euros. In fact, I think Euros so heavily influenced the NAWCQ. Number one, Shuffle Reborn was everywhere. Obviously, it was kind of the breakout star of Euros, but at the North American WCQ, it seemed like it was everywhere. There were even some Minerva Swarms that made it through the top cut that were playing Shuffle Reborn just because, you know, it's a card that obviously could bring back level 4s from the graveyard. They don't really need the monsters for their effects. Obviously, they can Synchro, they can Exceed, bring back Mizuki, Synchro options, etc, etc. But the reason that I think that True Dracos did so well is they're, they're obviously, like, you can get the one card extremely strong plays through Barrage or through any normal summon of the Zodiac card. So it's like, you get that really high ceiling and that simplicity of popping the fuck off through, you know, just basic Zodiac normal summon, go off with Chalk and I and doing your other stuff. But at the same time, a lot of those cards that are just absolutely killers to Zodiac, this deck doesn't just shut down from. I think that the 100% superstar from the NAWCQ was, in my opinion, Dimensional Barrier. And it's kind of interesting because Dimensional Barrier was a card that I want to say for maybe like a six week period, a lot of people were saying it's not as good as strike yes it's chainable but it's kind of falling out of favor obviously a lot of times it's going to be um a neg one i can't really think of that many times where you're going to even out i guess if your opponent tries to use like um something that would fusion summon maybe like polymerization fight for fusion something of that sort but uh, those decks aren't really that relevant it can end up being like a one for one but a card like dimensional barrier 
let's be real it obviously shuts zodiac completely down and a lot of times they're kind of backpedaling when you flip this over on them they try to basically set up with cards like ram ram so that they can just kind of survive through the next turn but when you use that against a deck like true draco okay well they can still tribute summon they can still throw masterpiece on the field they can still summon their uh true dracos back from the graveyard using their traps like they have a lot more options the same thing basically goes for flying c if they open up with maybe a um a copy of uh rat pier and you just give them a flying c okay well you don't know they might end up using uh one of their true draco cards to give them an extra normal summon and they might end up just tributing your card and you won't get anything out of that not only will you give them a monster for something like masterpiece where that is terrible because now you're you know you're basically locking yourself out of using monster effects to get rid of masterpiece but in addition to that now they still have that zodiac wrap here on the board they can still go to their xc so it's like even though i think a lot of people have accepted that the true draco version of zodiac is not as consistent it doesn't have to worry about dealing with the hate cards quite as much enemy controller is good but not absolutely great against it you know dimensional barrier really doesn't shut the deck down like it does pure zoo flying c doesn't shut the deck down like it does pure zodiac and there are just a lot of cool nifty things like um if you can get that masterpiece on the board, obviously you can just have problems with Zodiac considering people aren't really running battle traps right now. I think that Mirror Force would have been a really good card. It's one of the reasons why I thought Paleozoic would be strong because cards like Quaking Mirror Force can do a lot of work, but not a lot of people playing it. Also, it seems like uh, the Kaiju version of Zodiac is just completely died out, and I think I understand why. I think the reason that the Kaiju version of Zodiac didn't do all that hot and you don't see people really running a bunch of Kaijus in Zodiac main decks in Anymore is because it's just an absolute brick if you open with an if you open with interrupted slumber or if you open with a copy of any kaiju in your opening hand it's kind of like only opening with four cards and you essentially have a card that doesn't accelerate any of your plays it doesn't help you get to where you want to go to in any capacity and you really can't use that card until your up until your next turn hoping your opponent throws either a you know a, what's it called a dynamite or a masterpiece on the field and if they don't throw that on the field then it's even more of a dead card you know where whether it's something like max c is yeah max c doesn't help you but at least it can kind of counteract your opponent's special summoning or even something like a ghost ogre can take out a diagram and ash blossom can take out a terraforming or something like that or it can take out a pot of desire so I do think that the Kaiju engine as a whole is probably on a, a little bit of a downward slope. I'm not saying that it will be something that comes out of the game because it's definitely still good sideworthy. I just don't think that people will really run Kaijus. And this event was really interesting because I would say that this event pretty much just went uh, according to plan. I mean, yeah, well, there were some things that popped up. Uh, Performer Pals, or nah, I can't really say that. It was, uh, I guess you could call it Pendulum Magicians, ended up making Top 8, which was... <laughs> Like, where the hell did that come from? Pendulum Magicians made top eight. Paleozoics ended up making the top cuts. Uh, there were some Minerva decks that made top cut. I believe Patrick Hoban actually played a Mermil, like, Water Zoo that ended up making top cut. And when I say top cut, I mean top 64. But to be completely honest, the entire time that I watched the stream... I wanted Paleozoic to win just so that I could be right, or at least make top eight, but I, I never honestly felt that a Zodiac deck was not going to win this event because it's just too damn strong, and we are now seeing that this deck has basically completed its tier one dominance, obviously dominating Euros and now dominating the NAWCQ, and it is pretty damn amazing how much the European National Champ or the European Championship actually influenced the uh, NAWCQ, and I think that if the NAWCQ was before Euros, I think the event would have been completely different. I don't think Kaiju, or excuse me, I don't think that the True Draco Zodiac build would have done as well because uh, I don't think people would have been playing so many Flying Seas and so many of those, uh, you know, anti-Zodiac cards in the main deck. And I think it actually benefited from it. I don't think you would have seen so many uh, copies of Shuffle Reborn. A couple of things I want to talk about. For one, Max C, guys. This is what a lot of people are saying that Max C was basically like the unofficial winner of the event because if you watch the finals uh the player who went first won uh both of their games and then in game three uh max c was pretty much like the deciding factor uh chester opened with it going second his opponent only opened up with uh basically he didn't open with any monsters but he opened with a barrage and when you have the max c to counter the barrage what can your opponent do he had to end up you know uh, basically stopping on ram ram and he didn't have any other monsters i think he had like double copies of my body as a shield 
shield and he just kind of got out grinded and out resourced and I've never been one to really argue that you know putting a card at one from three is a bad thing because it makes it feel like the player who draws it first has a big advantage like I've always been kind of okay with both players having a copy of soul charge because obviously there are so many cards that only fit in a certain deck but I think that I actually am buying into that argument when it comes to Maxi. I, I honestly think that Maxi has gotten to the point where it's so staple and it's so game changing and everything in Yu-Gi-Oh! outside of True Dracos is so predicated on being able to special summon massively. I think Maxi either needs to go to three or Konami just needs to take this shit out of the game because we already have so many other good hand traps. I mean, we have Ghost Ogre, we have Winter Cherries, which nobody played at the event, which was a little, a little shocking. I just, I would have thought that Winter Cherries would have been a very solid card going second, but again, I guess it would have been another card that, you know, is kind of lackluster against a true Draco version of Zodiac, but amazing against a regular version of Zodiac. We have Effect Veiler, which nobody has played in a long time. Obviously, we have Ghost Ogre. We have a enough good hand traps in the game that I think Max C probably is going to need to go because I don't really think Konami is going to put this card back at three. And then I also want to point out the anime duel that they had this year, which was really good. It was actually a double duel. I went ahead and uh, <laughs> reshot this part of the video because I kind of uh, indirectly spoiled who won the matches and the first one. And I was like, I don't want to go ahead and spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen them. But this was actually really good. Um, I would say Aster's voice actor was amazing. Speaking from somebody who has not seen the dubbed of uh, GX, he was really good. He was super into it. Not as good as last year's duel. Uh, Seto Kaiba versus Yugi at Worlds, but I don't think Konami is ever going to top this one, but this was definitely a really good watch, especially for you anime fans. You can catch it on my channel if you want to see it and you haven't seen it yet. But, and then a couple of other things that were kind of disappointing from what I hear from people talking at this, uh, from people talking about it, it seems like theft was a legitimate problem at the NAWCQ and actually some arrests were made. You can see right here, a Yu-Gi-Oh player being arrested. That is, uh, man, that is, that is just sad. I mean, come on guys. Let's just, how, why are people still stealing cards? I mean, yeah, I stole Pokemon cards when I was like 10 years old, but no grown ass adult should be stealing Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So I thought that that was kind of unfortunate and, uh, it's just really sad that you're getting arrested and then there were a couple of on stream moments that were kind of crazy where in a feature match a dude kind of had this as his uh, hand he has three copies of brilliant fusion a lazuli and then kind of a useless bujin and he ends up winning this duel by i mean it was probably the luckiest win of the entire event you're looking at this hand it's like wow this the only way this hand could be worse is if the you know the bujin uh hiroko was obviously a copy of like you know gem knight garnet that would have been like the 1000 percent brick hand but it seemed like it was actually a pretty standard event i can't say that it was like some crazy event where a whole bunch of unpredictable things happened because this was probably the most standard event that we've had of the entire year except maybe ycs seattle which you know obviously zodiac came out and dominated this one is this was an event where zodiac just kind of proved their dominance they proved that there is really nothing in the game that can hard counter them they had the numbers they had uh, a lot of the best players who were playing them in fact from what i heard uh i I believe every single person who qualified from North America was playing a Zodiac variant. Obviously, first place was playing uh, True Draco Zoo, but then everybody else was pretty much playing a pure version of Zoo. I believe Billy Break was as well, and it's going to be interesting to see how it actually, uh, you know, how the game goes forward for Worlds, because obviously True Dracos and Zodiac are not going to be decks that are going to be played there because of the OCG ban list. And uh, last thing. Uh, having Jarrell Winston announce the uh, the top eight for the Dragon Duels, that was kind of hype, man. I I'm, I'm glad to see Jarrell Winston back. Obviously, somebody who has been the Worlds before, played Exodia at Worlds, which I still think was awesome. A couple of years ago, ended up making uh, top eight with Ritual Beast, which was kind of hype. And this was an interesting event. I think the TCG will look back at this as uh I, I i guess a turning point where Yu-Gi-Oh kind of proved that even in a tier zero meta it just didn't matter people were still having fun people were still willing to come out and show up to the event because you can't deny it guys whether you hate zodiac whether you love them whether you hate this format and you say oh my god the game is so stale right now do this do that do this do that i mean the attendance numbers that we had guys this is the largest nawcq ever and i can't believe that we 
broke our record that we just set last year so anyways what did you guys ultimately think of the event i honestly cannot wait for worlds billy break gonna see what's gonna happen i would probably say maybe invoked might be the favorite for that event but that's a different discussion for another day anyways if you guys enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up thank you guys for watching as always and subscribe if you have not already